summarize our two learning goals for this lesson are, first of all, to use exponent rules to simplify expressions with rational exponents. The word rational means fraction. So when you think about that, we're thinking uh, we're taking expressions that have exponents that are fractions, and we're applying those same rules we learned in the last lesson. The second part of the lesson, we're going to want to switch between rational exponents, again, exponents that are fractions, and radicals. And we'll talk about what radicals are here in a moment. Okay. So just to quickly, this can be really fast, just a quick reminder, right? If I look at this first example over here, if I multiply things at the same base, our rule was the base stays the same, and we add the exponents. I go 6 plus 2. So now I have this, these expressions that have rational exponents, right? There's fractions. The rule is still the same. When I multiply things at the same base, the base stays the same, and then I just have to add the exponents. Now the challenging part is, you know, we've got to find a common denominator times by 2 on the top and the bottom. So that would be 5 to the 2 fourths plus 1 fourth. So it ends up being 5 to the 3 fourths. So same rule we've done before. It's no different. We're just doing it now with, with rational exponents with fractions up in the exponents. Uh, if we have parentheses, remember the 5 applies to everything on the inside. So I've got to go 8 to the 3rd to the 5th, which the rule is we multiply the exponents. So 8 to the 15th. 3 to the 4th to the 5th. Multiply the exponents, so 3 to the 20th. Oops, I put 30th, but 3 to the 20th. Well, if there's rational exponents, same thing. I go 8 to the 1 half squared. A half times 2 is 1. 3 to the 1 third times 2. Remember, 1 third times 2. Think of 2 as being 2 over 1. Multiply straight across, you end up with 8 to the 2 thirds, or 3 to the 2 thirds. So same rules. You just now have some fractions up there in the powers. Uh, right? This one's division. We know we keep the base the same. You take the top power minus the bottom power, 7 minus 2, so 5 to the 5th. Uh, this is the same thing. This one's a little disguised. Sometimes we don't recognize it, but that's 5 to the 1st power. So keep the base the same. We're dividing, and you subtract the exponents. So if 1 minus 2 thirds, which is 1 third. So 5 to the 1 third. So all those same rules that we learned with with uh, fraction, or sorry, with with exponents apply to these rationals also. I'm going to skip by that one. So here's a couple of examples. I want to simplify these. So we just have to pick the right rule. I'm timesing things at uh, number one here. I'm timesing things at the same base, so the base stays the same, and the rule is that we add the exponents. And you, the hardest part is really is adding those two fractions together. Uh, one eighth plus I'm going to times the top and the bottom by 4, so we get 12 eighths. We add them together and we get 13 eighths. Okay, over here on this one, I've got these x's. I'm going to just focus on those. There's no power, it's 1. So keep the base the same. And the rule is we subtract the power. I have the y's. Again, there's no power, so that's a 1. Keep the base the same and subtract their powers. Now I am minusing a negative one half, which means uh, this first one would be also well, it's 5 thirds minus 1. I'm going to write 1 as being 3 thirds. So 5 thirds minus 3 thirds, 2 thirds. Uh, that changes to a plus. So 1 plus a half. I'm going to write as being 2 over 2 plus a half. Add it together and you get 3 halves. That's really as far as we can take it. So nothing really new here. These are all the same rules you've already practiced with exponents. All we're doing is just applying them with rational exponents when there's fractions. Now you may be thinking or asking like what's the deal with the rational exponents. So let's kind of figure out what rational exponents are. So I have a bunch of examples here, a whole bunch, right? I'm going to start with this 9 to the 1 half. Okay, so to evaluate that, I don't know what the 1 half power means, but I do know that I can write 9 as being 3 squared. So I wrote 9 as being 3 squared, so right, that 9 became the 3 squared down there. The reason why I did that is because now I have 3 squared to the 1 half. I have a power to a power. We multiply those. So that's 3 to the, and 2 times a half is 1. So it's 3 to the first power. Well, what that tells me, right, is that 9 to the 1 half is equal to 3. So kind of keep that in. So, so let's try another one. 
Let's do this 64 to the one half. So because it's a one half power, if it's a one half power, if I can make that two, like I did on that problem, two times a half is one, then I can simplify it. So I'm going to ask, can I write 64 as being something to the second power? And that would just be eight. It's eight squared to the one half power. Okay, now we just multiply those together. Two times a half is one. We get eight to the first. So 64 to the one half is eight. Okay, try this one right here. So pause the video, try that 49 to the one half power. See what you get. All right, so because it's a one half power, you want it to be a squared. So I'm going to write it as being 7 squared to the 1 half. Times those together, I get 1. So it ends up being 7 to the first power. So 49 to 1 half equals 7. Uh, let's try this one, 27 to the 1 third. Now this is different. I don't want this to be a 2 because 2 times a third is not 1. It doesn't simplify. But if I could make it a 3, so if I could write it as being, and it, and it works, I can write it as being 3 to the third power to the 1 third. So what happens now, right? 3 times a third is 1. So I end up with 3 to the first power, which is just 3. So with a 1 third, if it's a 1 third power, I want to I want to find a cube, a cubic in there, a perfect cubic, you know, something that I can cube to get that 27, because then I know when I multiply the 3 and the third, it ends up being 1. Uh, here's, let's try the 16, 16 to the 1 fourth. So we might try 4 squared, but the problem is 2 times, a, right, if I did this, don't write this down, just watch. When I multiply those together, that's just a one-half, right? Two times a fourth is a half. That isn't what we want. I want that to simplify all the way down to be one. So since it's a one-fourth power, I want this to be a four in there. So my question is, what to the fourth power equals 16? It ends up being two. Two times two times two times two. So two to the fourth okay, is the same as 16. Now I power to a power and multiply them. So it ends up being 2 to the first power. Oops, sorry. Not 2, though. 2 to the first power is 2. Or not 1, sorry. It should be 2. Here's kind of an interesting one. 49 to negative 1 half. I'm going to flip that over. Remember our exponent rules. And now I'm just going to work with the 49 to the 1 half. So I'm going to go 1 over. It's a 1 half power. So I really want a square in there. We just did this one, right? That's 7. 2 times a half is 1. So that's it being 1 over 7 to the first power, which is really just 1 7. Hopefully you've kind of picked up on this here. That, right, 9 to the 1 half is 3. Well, maybe you've noticed, but the square root of 9 is also 3. Uh, 64 to the 1 half is 8. Well, the square root of 64 is 8. Uh, 27 to the 1 third is 3. Well, the cubed root of 27 Right? You ask yourself, what do I times by itself three times to get 27? Three times three times three is also equal to three. So what happens is there's a connection between a rational exponent, a fraction, and uh, the roots. Now those root signs all together, the, the square roots, cube roots, fourth roots are all together called radicals. But there's a connection between those two. So if I come down here, I could solve that 100 to the 1 half power like we just did, or we can actually switch it. A one-half power is the same as a square root. So the square root of 100 is 10, which that's the same thing we would get if we did it the, the other way. Uh, let me show you a couple more examples here. These are a little bit different. If I have 27 to the 2 thirds. So if I want to simplify this, I'm going to think, even though there's a 2 on top, I really want to get rid of that 3 so it will simplify. So I want this to be a third power. So what to the third power equals 27? We just did that, that's three. Now when I multiply the three by the two thirds, right? This is what happens. The reason why I wanted a three is because now that will cancel the two thirds. So that leaves me a three and three times two thirds is two and three squared is nine. Let's try this 16. So I'm gonna go, uh, let's see. So I have a two on the bottom. So I want this to be a square in here. So what do I square to get 16? And that's 4. 2 times 3 halves, right? That's 2 over 1 times 3 over 2. Those 2's just cancel. You end up with 4 to the third power, which is 4 times 4 times 4. And 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 again is 64. Well, 
it turns out that if I were to rewrite this problem as being the square root of 16 cubed, I get the exact same thing, right? Square root of 16 is 4, and 4 cubed is 64. So if you look, this bottom one right here, and we haven't talked about this, but when you have the square root of 16, this number right here is called the index. If there's a square root, it's always a 2. Even It's an unwritten 2. So there's really a 2 there. So look what happens. That 2 comes from the bottom of my fraction, and that 3 comes from the top of my fraction. So we can take, there's a connection again between rational exponents and powers. So I want to write, let's write down this rule. So this is your how you switch from a rational exponent to a, let me write this down, rational exponent to a, and we call those radical signs, those root signs. Okay. So this is how you switch back and forth. This is the second part of our lesson. Okay, so if I have something raised and I have a fraction exponent, a rational exponent, we can rewrite it as a radical. Radical sign is just these in, is the root sign. The bottom number, the n, is your index, and the m is a power. Now, just a heads up, you can write it that way, or you can put that power on the outside. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same thing. So making this connection, the top number, the m, is the power, whether you put it on the inside or the outside. The n is the root okay, that goes inside the radical. All right. So do, maybe make a note of this, too. Um, that number right there, that n, we refer to as the index. Okay, as the index. All right. So we'll see a couple of examples of this. So it says, what is 12a to the 2 thirds in radical form? So right now it's written with a rational exponent, and we want to write it as a radical. One thing to be really careful with is the 2 thirds only applies to the a. It does not apply to the 12. So when I rewrite it as a radical, I'm only going to rewrite that part right there. So the 12 we leave alone. Put your radical sign. The bottom number, the 3, is your index. So it's a cubed root of a, and the top number is your power a to the second power. Now if you wanted to, you could also write it this way. This is the same thing. I could do the cube root of a squared. So either one of those two will work. Okay, this next one's a little bit different because now the four-fifths, it doesn't just apply to the a, it applies to the 64. So you've got to be careful with this. I'm going to do my radical sign, fifth root, of 64a. Now this is a tricky part. That 4 has to apply to both of them. So sometimes I see this a lot where we'll put the 4 right there. The problem is now that 4 is only applying to the a and I want it to apply to the 64. So what we can do is you can put that whole big thing in parentheses like that. That would work. Or the other way you could do the fifth root of 64a and put the fourth power on the outside. So either one of those two is fine, but what we have to make sure of is that that fifth root applies to both of them and that the fourth power applies to both of them right? because they're both inside of the parentheses there. So that can be a little bit tricky. Okay, what I want you to do, I have a couple of examples right here, three of them. I want you to pause the video, try all three, and then come back and I'll kind of talk you through and you can check your answer. All right, so this first one's pretty simple. It's just a to the 5, 6. Just make sure... The 6 is your index, and the 5 is your power. And again, if you want to write it this way, the, this is fine. They're the same thing. So either one of those is fine. Okay, on part B, the 1 third only applies to the x. So I'm going to go 5, and it's only the x that's going to go inside of there. The, the denominator is 3. And the numerator is a 1, you know, so it's x to the first. So you don't really need that. That's just 5 cube root of x. Uh, part C. So this time the two-thirds applies to the whole thing. So when I write my radical, I'm going to put that whole thing inside of there. The three goes there. And the two has to apply to it all, so I'm going to put the two on the outside out there. Okay. So once you have that down, key things to remember. The bottom number, right, the bottom number is your index. The top number is your power. 
And then you just have to be really careful seeing, you know, what it applies to or what it doesn't apply to. All right, let me, let's go the opposite direction. So those are all going from rational exponents to radicals. Let's go from radicals to rational exponents. So this is just going the opposite way. So b is my base. So I'm going to go b to the uh, 3 is my exponent, so it goes on top. And 5 is my index, so it goes on the bottom. Right, so we just went the opposite way of what we just did a second ago. All right, look at this next one. This is a little bit tricky. We got 27d to the fifth. I think it's helpful to put a 1 by that 27. So when we rewrite this, we go 27, and it has a power of 1 and an index of 3. So it's 1 third. Then I have d. It has a power of 5 and an index of 3. So it be d to the 5 thirds. Okay, and we got a in. You could also do it this way if you wanted to. We could say it was uh, 27 d to the fifth to the one third power. That would be okay too. That way, the one third, right, the cube root has to apply to both of them, but the five is only applying to the d. So either one of these two are good. Why don't you guys give it a try? Again, I have uh, these three, these four examples. Uh, this, is, this is how we're going to end here. So if you want to give that a try at those four examples, pause it, work through them, and then just check it, check back with me. All right, so that first one, right, it's s to the, the power is 2, and the index is 3. So s to the 2 thirds. This one, right, the 12 is separate, so the 12 is still going to be separate, but I have x to the power of 4, index of 3. Part C, remember if it doesn't have an index, it's a square root, which means it has an index of 2. And you got to be careful, the square root applies to the 4 and the y, and so does the fifth power. So we could do it this way, 4y, right, the 5 is the power, the 2 is the index. Or we could do this, we go 4 to the 5 halves, y to the 5 halves. Right, the 5 and the 2 have to apply to both of them. Okay, on part D. The fourth root applies to the 256 and the A, but the 8 only applies to the A. So we could do that one thing. We put a 1 up there and say it's 256 to the 1 fourth, or we could say it's A to the, and A to the 8 fourths. And that actually simplifies, right? We go 256 to the 1 fourth, A squared. The other option is this, is I could leave the 256 A to the 8 in parentheses, and just put the one fourth power on the outside. Okay, so the, the main object, like what we want to do, accomplish here is we want to, first of all, just know that all the exponent rules we already learned apply to these um, rational exponents. That's the number one thing. And the second thing is we want to know how to go from either a rational exponent to a radical or a radical to a rational exponent. Yeah. Good luck.